Why quantum computers still don't work? Since the 80s, quantum computers have been theorized. We know it should work, and for 40 years, scientists have been tackling this problem. Companies have invested a lot of money, so what's the problem? Why is it not working? The promise of a quantum computer is that it can perform better than a classical computer, meaning it can go faster. And why do we care? Computers are already super fast. And yes, they are, sometimes. But some problems have a so-called exponential complexity. Optimization of energy flow, simulation of molecules, of physics, of material, and stuff like cryptography and finance. All these fields want computers to be faster. So that's why we care. To understand why quantum computer does not work, we need to understand how, well, how it works. Imagine a particle that can have either a speed of 50 or a speed of 100. We will refer to the speed of the particle as a state. This particle can be in the state of speed 50 or in the state of speed 100, and we denote the state with this bracket. In the quantum world, this particle could also be in the state 50 plus 100. This is called quantum superposition. But so what does it mean? What happens if we measure the speed of such a particle? Well, we would find either 50 or 100 randomly. But after that, if let's say we measured 100, we would be certain that if we measure again, we would find 100. But now let's imagine I have two particles and I know their speed v1 and v2 and they are in this state. If I measure the speed of particle 1 and I find 50, I'm sure that the speed of particle 2 will also be 50. This is known as quantum entanglement. These are the two properties used to make a quantum computer. You can use entanglement and superposition to create a gigantic superposition of states and exploit this parallelization to go exponentially faster. These devices that can be in superposition of states and entangled, we call them qubit for quantum bit opposed to the classical bit of classical computer. These are really noisy and fragile devices. The lifetime absolute record of these devices is 1 millisecond, so 0.001 second. You cannot perform a calculation with qubits that only last for 1 millisecond. But this was already anticipated by Shor, one of the fathers of quantum computing, who proposed a magic solution, quantum error correction. The idea is really simple and not so much related to quantum stuff. Instead of storing your information in one qubit, you store it in, let's say, 10 qubits. Now, after a while, some qubits will have gone wrong, but if at least half of your qubits are still good, you can correct the ones that went wrong and go on. And this works theoretically, but the problem is that you need a ton more of qubits. And here I just described the memory, but when you need to process your information to make a calculation on this quantum error correction code, you need even more qubits. Google estimated you would need 20 million qubits to break RSA crypto system, the thing that secure all the websites on the internet. And here you face a lot of barriers, but the most obvious one is that to make qubits work, the most popular approach today is to put them in a fridge that cool them to the absolute zero, minus 273 degrees Celsius or minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. These fridges are masterpiece of engineering, but it's absolutely impossible today to put all the stuff required to make 20 million qubits work in it. But tremendous advances have been made to be able to manipulate quantum physics as we want since the 80s. Nobody knows when it's going to work, but that's the principle of science.